For year one to be considered a success for head coach Mike Elko, I think he's got to win eight football games. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to discuss what does Mike Elko have to do this season, this upcoming, this year, in 2024, it's another one, hey, a new year. What is Mike Elko going to do this year for us to have the, a conversation on January 4th, 2025, and say, that was a, a successful year for Mike Elko. And to me, when it comes to record, I have other things we're going to talk about, um, development-wise, recruiting-wise. You know, We're going to look at it from all different perspectives. But flat out from a a wins and losses on the football field, you know, I, I think the Aggies got to win eight games for this to be a success for Mike Elko. And I want to add the caveat. Listen, and this is part of the conversation. A lot of people, you know, sometimes I think have too high expectations for a first-year head coach and have too low expectations for a first-year head coach. And it's, it's kind of funny. I haven't really gotten a feel for where the vibe is when it comes to uh, Mike Elko and, and what people, you know, I mean, like I know how we feel, how Aggie fans feel, but it's like, how, how does everybody else feel? I'd be curious to hear the perspective from other fan bases, national media, but looking, I mean, just flat out of my opinion, I think there's a, a, you have to remember this. You have to remember how easy the schedule is now. Once again, I always want to add this. When I say easy, it is still an SEC football schedule. It, there is there is nothing going to be given to you. But, um, you know, and I, I just, I always say, give a head coach one year. I think that, I think that you need one year to really start your recruiting. You need one year to really establish the way you're going to run things different stuff like that. Now, if you can be successful in that, you know, that year, well, Hey, I will give you a year. If you can be successful in that year, it, it really, you know, gives me excitement. It, it gives it'll get everybody excitement of what can come in the future. So, I mean, just looking at the schedule and like I said, going from last season to this season, I think that, the, you know, once again, the schedule, and I can, I'll read it again. Once again, Notre Dame at home, McNeese at home, at Florida, Bowling Green at home, Arkansas at the neutral site, Missouri at home, at Mississippi State, LSU at home, at South Carolina, New Mexico State at home, at Auburn, Texas at home. So, you know, all of your most challenging games are at home. And then your your road games, your road SEC games are very winnable. I, I think that you got to win eight football games for this year to be a success, and I think that is that is safe. To be honest with you, I feel very confident the Aggies doing eight football games next year. Just, I mean, you know, looking at the fact that now I said the other day, and I want I've changed my opinion a little bit. I, I think that. Um, I said, is Missouri going to be a one-hit wonder? You know, is Missouri who we think they are, or are they are they a one-hit wonder? I kind of have a feeling that they're going to be a good football team for a long time. I, I um, I've changed my opinion there a little bit. Now, does that mean that at home the Aggies can't beat them? No, I, I think that even if they are good, that Texas A&M. Another you know point to add is I don't. I think Texas A&M. Even games that they're favored to lose, it's going to be by less than a touchdown. 
there's not going to be one game on this schedule that you look and Texas A&M is is 14 point underdogs or or you know what I mean like it, I, I just I mean Notre Dame at home uh, to open the season I bet you that's I mean it, the line's going to be in the in the favor of Notre Dame more than likely but I bet you it's like a four or five point line you know um, Missouri bet you it's a four or five point line even if they're ranked high because it's a tough environment against a a good football team we assume. At, a and M's gonna have, um, and I mean LSU. It sounds like they're replacing their entire defensive staff. What's that gonna look like? Are they gonna get their defense figured out? Um, you know, we we don't we don't know, and and that's kind of. I thought that um, their quarterback looked good in the in the bowl game, but you know, th- this is what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at here is that I think Mike Elko can succeed. In year one, I'll throw I'll throw this out at you. I'll throw this hypothetical out at you. Those of you that have seen Florida's schedule, um, if you haven't seen Florida's schedule, go look at it because it is like I genuinely feel horrible for Billy Napier. I mean, that schedule is like they, they're like non-conference games are like Miami, Florida State, and UCF, and then their um, SEC conference games are incredible. I mean, it's just go look at that schedule. And my point is. If Mike Elko had that schedule, this conversation would not be we, – we, this conversation would be very different right now, incredibly different. But luckily, the Aggies don't. The Aggies have an incredibly manageable schedule. I, I, once again, I think easy is a strong word just knowing that it's an SEC schedule that involves trips to, to the swamp and trips to the plains. You know, it's not – it's not the easiest schedule in the world, but for an SEC football schedule, it is very manageable. So I think for year one to be a success, Mike Elko has to win eight football games. But I'll be honest with you, I I, I already see the comments coming in. I, I think some of y'all might say he needs to win nine. I, I just think that, you know, it's it's funny. It's funny because looking at the schedule, I almost I, – I, I won't – those of you that are going to want to comment that, I think he's got to win nine. I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm not going to disagree with you. I just think it's hard to put those expectations on a first-year head coach. You know, there's going to be – or first-year head coach, you know, at, at a new school, new conference. It, it's going to be – there's going to be some growing pains, and, you know, some stuff's going to go wrong, some stuff's going to go right. But what I would love to see is if Mike Elko could, you know, ha- like I said, for this season to go chalk, you would probably say the Aggies are supposed to lose to Notre Dame, Missouri, LSU, and Texas and win every other game. So in all reality, I think eight and four kind of is chalk. But I think if Mike Elko can win a game he's not supposed to, that I just there's there's nothing better than that. Then when you're in a season where there's a lot of excitement a lot around the program, a, a lot of hype, and you win a game that you're maybe not supposed to, if you beat Texas, it, you know you, you start the season with a win over Notre Dame, the excitement around this program is just going to be through the roof. So I just feel I think that I think that for this season, well, to wrap this up, I think that for this season. To be a success for Mike Elko and for the Aggies, they got to win eight games. But in all reality, I think that a, a they can win more games than that, and I wouldn't be surprised. And I think some fans might look at that as the floor. Um, and you know, here's the deal. And I always like to add the point for those that hear me say I, I think he needs to win eight games or nine games, because then there's going to be the folks that say, "Well, hey, listen." You know, it is a first-year head coach. Why? Why do you believe he's going to have this success in year one? I, frankly, I think we're we're getting ready to talk about a little bit of the portal. I think that some home runs are coming in the portal. A, and B, this schedule is just too manageable to act like Mike Elko can't win eight games this year. So those are my thoughts. Once again, I want this discussion to be an open, and I have two more. We'll, we'll talk about in segment two. Two more things that I think Mike Elko needs to do in 2024 to be a successful first year. But when it comes to just wins wise, I'm very curious to hear y'all's thoughts on that. Do we feel that eight we feel good about, or does it need to be nine? Does it need to be seven? Where do we feel there? Let me know y'all's thoughts on that in the comments. Now we're going to talk about 
why recruiting for 2025 needs to get going and why we got to see some player development that those are the other two things that need to happen for Mike Elko to first season to be a success. So before we have those conversations, I want to tell you about our wonderful friends over at game time. Game time is another one of those companies. I just love to sit here and talk good about because I love how game time, they are the ticket service that wants to help us who wants us you know sports fans comedy fans concert fans music fans they don't want you to have to spend a million dollars to get a ticket they want to make sure everybody can get to go to the events that you want to go to for the right prices you know i've seen competition i've seen the prices uh, of game time and you know in their competition and Game time wins every time. It's where I use, it's what I use to get every single one of my tickets to anything I go to now. And I highly recommend you do the same. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed so the other two things that we need to see from coach elko for this season 2024 this year you can say this season this year whatever you want to call it to be a success um the other one's player development you know we talk about player development all the time it's a real thing and i know us Aggie fans might kind of look at this and go, wait, what is player development? Is that is that a real thing? Are we sure? You, you're allowed to do that? Your players are allowed to get better. Are you, are you sure? Um, and those that feel that way, hey, I get you. I do. I get you. But it is a real thing. And it is thing a thing that other schools are doing and can do. And I think Texas A&M needs to start doing that. You know, wouldn't that be great? But um, all kidding aside, I would love to see Coach Elko – prove what I think he's going to do, and that's develop the talent on this roster, the talent in the 2024 recruiting class. It would just be so great to see a player like Noah Thomas take a step forward in this offseason or Terry and York go from here to here from what we saw to, you know, from what we saw last year to what we see next year. That would just be so exciting to see players take that step forward And, I mean, I just – looking at what Mike Elko did at Duke, turning around that roster, turning around and developing those players, he didn't have the talent at Duke that he has at Texas A&M, and he will have at Texas A&M. It's just plain and simple, he didn't. And he found a way to turn a program around and win some games against some more talented football teams. Now he comes to A&M, and he has an incredibly talented football team um, until and a, a, a talented recruiting class, I believe he'll have a talented recruiting class next season. You need to see development from those players, and I think you will see it. I think you will see it. So, player development is the second thing that Mike Elko needs to do for 2024 to be a success this season, to be a success uh, on top of the win eight games. And then the last thing we need to see is Mike Elko have a good 2025 recruiting class. I saw, so I somebody commented on, on my um, show from, I don't know, two weeks ago, whatever, um, where I was talking about why I believe Mike Elko is going to have se- success on the recruiting trail. And, you know, I think it's it has a little bit to do with relationships. In When it comes to this recruiting class, you just – you have to build those relationships. So like some folks are saying we lost uh, Dominic McKinley, you know, he had he, uh, coach Elko had a shot to hold on to him and couldn't get it done. And, you know, I, I don't look at it that way, frankly, because I look at it like this, as I say all the time, recruiting is building relationships. That's what it is. And it, it takes a while to, to do that to build those relationships. It's not an easy thing to come in and, and, and say, okay, hey, yeah, what's going on? You can't swoop in and do that. 
So you're yeah, when there's a coaching transition, you're gonna lose some players. It's normal, it's gonna happen. I get that. It's going to happen. That's just part of it. So I I, I haven't seen anything, anything that tells me that this recruit uh, this staff won't recruit. Now, I do think they need to get going in 2025 because now is when you build those relationships. They're already behind. I mean, in all reality, recruiting is a two, three year process. They're already behind for 25. So 26 will be the first class. Like if the 25 class is ranked like 15, 14, I'm not going to be angry. But if the 26 class isn't, you know, top 10, that's when we're going to go, ooh, okay, what's going on here? But um, now I'd like to see this class be very successful, of course. But um, I think that's where my head at is recruiting wise. But, you know, just win some battles. Go head to head against Bama and Texas and uh, Oklahoma and Ohio State and, you know, some other SEC schools and, and win some recruiting battles, land a good class. And I think that'd be in 2025, that'd be the last thing I need to see. And of course, you know, I say 2025 class when I'm talking about this season, you know, a lot of that happens this year. So that would make me feel good about Mike Elko, flat out. It, it, those three things win eight games, show you can develop talent, and get going in the right direction on the 2025 recruiting class. If you do those three things, this season is a through-the-roof success from Mike Elko. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is just a little bit, I'm, and this isn't a long conversation, then we'll talk a little bit about the portal. The vibes, the vibes right now are, are just are through the roof. Some might care about that stuff, some might not. I just feel like opening up and getting on Aggie Twitter, you know, yesterday, at, kind of after the Coach Wiggins hire, it just, I think this fan base is buying in. And I'll tell you this. I think that positive vibes and hype are two different things. You know, we've seen a lot of hype around Texas A&M. 2022, 21, 20, you know, we've seen hype. That hype to me is different from these vibes are just in a really good spot. And I'm telling you, is this just a gut feeling, a personal feeling? I don't know. And I want to hear y'all's thoughts if, if y'all feel the same way, but it, it just feels like the vibes are so positive right now around this football program. People are excited. You know, people are buying in to what Mike Elko is doing at Texas A&M. And I'm one of them. I mean, listen, I you know, y'all know every you everydayers know that I if I ever have a take, have an opinion that doesn't age well, I, I'm gonna own it. You know, I'm very willing to own it. Uh, I'm willing to admit I'm wrong. And I'll just be brutally honest. I think so far I've been wrong about my early opinions on Elko. I mean, I discussed it when when there was still a coaching search going on, and I was saying like. Is Elko really the guy you pay this buyout for Jimbo Fisher for? And I, I'll tell you, I was wrong on that at this point. I, I just, I think what he's already done, the coaching staff he's put together, and what he is about to do in the transfer portal, I just think that Mike Elko has proven me wrong so far, and I think he's going to be great. So the vibes are just so incredible around this Texas A&M football program right now. And I'm getting really excited for the future. And like I said, it's not hype. It's not, we're going to win the national championship. It's not like that. It's more like good things are happening. This program is moving in the right direction and, and they're doing it the right way. You know, they're, they're recruiting some, some real football players. They're doing a great job in the portal, which like I said, we're going to write discuss here in a minute. It just seems like things are really going in the right direction for the Aggies right now. And, and, and I think this fan base should be incredibly excited about what the future holds for Texas A&M football. We're going to talk a little bit about the transfer portal. I just think there's a lot of good news coming. And we'll talk about what that means coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I got to tell you about our wonderful friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up. Painful, ladies and gentlemen, I know. But there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live game, same parlays. Five, sorry, live, same game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. I like that. I use that. It, it, what it does is it shows you some bets that other people have placed, and you can say, oh, man, I kind of like that. And you can kind of trail those bets. I just think FanDuel is a ton of fun to use. This week in the NFL is one of my favorite weeks. It's in my favorite weeks to bet. It's incentive week. I love that. What does that mean? That means that players, six catches and 80 yards – or um, gets this player $400,000, right? I love those. I love those because, and now there's a caveat to this. It's only for players that are not in the playoff picture. Go look up videos on it because those always happen. It's one of my favorite parlays to make. Very excited about that. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So two quick conversations I want to have before we call it a Thursday. The first is just the transfer portal. And, you know, we're going to get more in-depth tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of visits going on this weekend, going on today, going on yesterday. We're going to get more in-depth into the players I'm excited about. We talked a little bit about Nick Scorton yesterday. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about the players tomorrow. But I just want to talk about why. I mean, just a real quick hit conversation. There are so many talented players that are, as I just said, coming on campus for a visit, on campus for a visit, or on, on campus for a visit yesterday. This is this is what we were waiting for in the portal. I just think that you're getting ready to see. Oh, I mean, it's going to be it's it's winter, and the birds are flocking in. You know, for the winter, that's what's happening. In in and here come all these players on campus for visits. You're gonna see a lot of players, I think, commit, I think, um in the next couple of, of days, week, which is gonna create for a ton of fun conversations here at Locked On Aggies. But um, oh, and then uh Steve Wolfong, who's a guy who I you know trust a lot in this industry is uh, put in a crystal ball for the Aggies to land Nick Scorton. I just can't – I can't express how exciting that would be if Texas A&M was able to bring in that talented of a football player who's going to come in and I think immediately be one of the best pass rushers in the SEC. He's great He's great against the run. You know, I hadn't watched – I knew who Nick Scorton was. I hadn't watched it uh, just from what he did at, at Purdue, but I hadn't watched a ton of tape on him. And I watched a little bit of tape. He's a he can see, he's really good stopping the run as well, and I don't think a, enough people give him credit on that. He's not just a pass rusher, so um, I, I mean I, I can sit here and talk about Nick Scorton for about forty five minutes, and I can't get all of my excitement across about the chances the Aggies have of landing him. So that's across your fingers and just hope because gosh, gosh Almighty, he would be incredibly incredibly helpful to this football team. But a lot of, we have some linebackers coming on campus, a lot of secondary players, some pass rushers, offensive linemen, every position that we have wanted the Aggies to hit hard. It seems like those players are getting ready to be on campus for visits. Um, and, and I just think you're going to see a lot of additions in the portal. We'll have more of that conversation on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Aggies. I'll kind of break down more. Um, you know, different players that are going to be on campus, players that are going to be visiting. We'll have that conversation tomorrow, but there's just, I think, a lot to be excited about. And the last real quick conversation I want to have, this is interesting. So I get emails, and I don't know how I started getting these emails. I really don't. You know what I mean? I think it's through writing stuff, but beside the point. But um, from Bet Online, which is a service, and it's like, a, it's like this type of service that um, – sends you odds from different odds makers from our friends over at FanDuel and different stuff like that. And looking at this, they gave odds for Texas A&M to win the national championship. And, you know, I find this so funny that Texas A&M, where we see it right now, has the, ha, their, their odds to win the national championship. Now, I'm not, 
I want to add this. I'm not saying Texas A&M is going to win the national championship. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I think just looking at some odds, it kind of it kind of takes me and it makes me say like, I mean, you know, there people I think outside of College Station are starting to buy in to this program. So the Aggies' odds are 33 to one. 14th in all college football, now 7th in the SEC, which is kind of funny, but that's part of college football. Um, And, you know, I just look at this, and does it really matter? No. Is this really a, a deep, long conversation to have? No. I just think that, to me, shows people believe in Mike Elko, people believe in what he's going to do at Texas A&M, and that the future is incredibly bright for the Aggies. Kind of like I've just been saying today, the vibes are good. People are feeling good. I have a feeling that Coach Elko is going to turn this program around and get Texas A&M to the top of college football with, you know, at some point in the near future. I just, I'm starting to feel that just coaching staff hires what he's doing in the portal. I have a good feeling about Coach Elko's tenure at Texas A&M. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day today. Thank you so much for tuning in every single day. It's almost Friday, ladies and gentlemen. I know we're all looking forward to the weekend. Have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.